Coming up on Mountain News this morning, hard hit areas here in our region keep an eye on the forecast and spaces dedicated to bringing the community together turn into shelters to help those heavily affected by the devastation. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. 632 now on this Monday morning. I'm Dakota Makris. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And let's take it right now to Brandon Robinson this morning. Brandon, good morning. We're starting a little bit different this morning for this hit, Dakota, because we won't go, we'll go through and recap some of these flood advisories because we've had some active flooding this morning in the Neon community. So we're going to continue to run through these for you. So until 7 o'clock, which is basically, I know they're about 27 minutes now because it's 633, you're seeing that one going for parts of Knott, Ledger, Perry, and Pike counties. And that's a good chunk of people who are affected out there this morning, more than 15,000. We go to our next one that expires at 715 for parts of Clay, Knox, Leslie, and Perry. So these are the same areas that were hard hit last week with those sales, and they're going to continue to be hard hit this morning. 12,000 people included in that one. Just a smaller one over there for parts of Breathitt, Clay, Jackson, Owsley, and Perry. Only about 700 people over there, but that doesn't mean that's not going to cause some issues. So again, any reports you got, send them in to us as soon as you can, especially pictures. That way we can get those on the air as soon as possible. And then until 915 this morning for Breathitt, Floyd, Knott, Letcher, and Perry counties, almost 18,000 people there. So Again, we zoom it out to radar where you can see the heavier bands of rain are still falling this morning. We'll take you right back in to the areas. And again, this is basically right there from Buckhorn all the way back. Northern Perry, uh, Southern Breathitt, over toward Knott County, over toward the Hindman there, just north of Hindman, Pippa Passes, back over toward Dorton, Virgie areas, Pikeville, seeing some heavy rain all the way into southwest Virginia. So we're going to keep a very close eye on that this morning, and we'll keep you posted as more reports start to come in. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Dozens of people here in eastern Kentucky have lost their lives due to the devastating flooding. At least six people in Breathitt County are among the confirmed victims. Officials there say they're keeping a close eye on the forecast as more rain continues to fall. Search and rescue crews say they worry that the waterways may be more susceptible to flooding after all the damage and debris that's been left behind from last week. Uh, the physical damage has been catastrophic, but Brendan Miller worries about the mental toll this could take. Once you suffer this type of flooding, not once, but now twice, when people hear rain, it's going to affect them for, for months, years, and maybe even the rest of their lives. Well, the Breathitt County Sheriff has imposed a curfew because of looting. It goes into effect from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. until further notice. Law enforcement in Knott, Letcher, and Perry counties have also reported issues with looting. A photo has been seen thousands of by thousands of people across the country showing a 98-year-old woman, May Amber, trapped as she watched water rise in her home along with her furniture. May, her son, and grandson were all stuck in their Letcher County home as the water rose inside. Her granddaughter shares the remarkable story of their rescue, thankful for the efforts of strangers who saved their lives. I can see her face, so she's... It is chilling video of a family rescued from their Letcher County home as fast-moving water surrounded them. People were just standing there watching, trying to get to my my grandmother and brother and um, uncle. Bad. And the, 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 the current was so swift. This is really bad. God be with us. Inside the home, Missy Crovetti's 98-year-old grandmother, May, lovingly called Mom May, was running out of time as water kept rising. And I also knew from pictures that were being posted, seeing where the, the river was coming up to, I knew that they were very much in trouble. Feeling helpless from Illinois, Missy posted this picture her brother took of Mom May, hoping someone could save them. I sent those out out of desperation, hoping that someone with a boat would make their way to her house and get them out of there. People still in the house. From outside, neighbors were trying to get to the house, but the current and deep water just was not safe. I did not know if my brother was alive for a while. I'd been told that they thought that he had washed downstream. So I had about, I want to say, six to eight hours that I was questioning. Thankfully, they are all alive and safe. Strangers, now called heroes, risking their lives to save them. And it was all caught on video. And I will say that I 
I refrained from watching it for a little bit because it, and I, I, someone asked me if I, if I wanted to comment on it and I was like, and it started to like get all teary and I was like, I don't know if I can, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, as we were watching it and I was like, oh, it's just really hard. It's hard to see your family clinging on to stay above water and get to high ground. Missy is grateful to the ones who helped and the prayers from the thousands who shared this picture of Mame. You see so much on the news nowadays and you think, oh gosh, we all, we're all in a fight and we all hate each other and the truth of the matter is, is I guess we really don't. Well, Shad Hedrick reporting right now. The family is trying to figure out where May is going to stay for now. Missy's brother has found some keepsakes like jewelry, but her home is destroyed. For those at WKCB radio station in Knott County, flooding outside of its studio was relatively common, but nothing could have prepared staff for the flooding that took place Thursday morning. Flood waters were at least four feet high in the building, damaging most of the equipment and making the building inoperable. But through the devastation, the station's general manager, Randy Thompson, says he feels lucky. You know, it's stuff, and it can be replaced, and, and, uh, and it will be eventually, you know. But a lot of the stuff you don't, you, we don't need. But, uh, you know, we have friends and families and people that have lost loved ones, children. And, and, and so my loss pales in comparison. So uh, I feel guilty even talking about it. Thompson says he is working on assembling a temporary station at his home, but in the meantime, listeners can stay up to date by visiting their Facebook page. A space dedicated to bringing the community together is doing just that, but in a different way. The Knott County Sportsplex is operating as a collection site and a shelter as part of the community's relief efforts. Ball Creek Volunteer Fire Department Chief Benny Bailey says he is amazed by how the community has showed up and showed out for this operation. Um, our community has been extremely responsive and it's somewhat um, humbling to think that someone comes in and, and they lost half of their house but they feel fortunate enough that they've still got half to live in so they're bringing in the stuff that they don't need. Bailey adds he and the other volunteers are working with FEMA and the Red Cross to find more permanent options for people who lost their homes but until then they're working to do all they can to help the people of Knott County. Well, those with Knott Central Athletic Department played their part in helping people recover. Knott County athletes hosted a cookout to help bring hot meals to neighbors across the area. School officials say that much of the food used to cook with came from random donations in Lexington. Boys basketball head coach Casey Huff says it's the least his team could do to help their community. This is one thing we could do that was simple. We could get hot meals to people. That, that was something that we, we can't turn electric back on. We, we can't, you know, get your bridge fixed right now. But, you know, if we have the means and the resources, we can at least provide a hot meal and try to get that to you and get you fed for a day. Um, like I said, it's not much, but I do think it's a start. We had to get the ball rolling somewhere. Well, Huff says the team's prayers are with their community and southeastern Kentucky will stand together. One local restaurant also set up camp in Knott County to give back to flood victims. Junior Sabachi handed out free meals yesterday at Knott Central. The need was far beyond expectations, beginning an early out and, and excuse me, an hour early and calling for more food less than an hour in. Owner Sean Moore says that even though he was impacted, it's important to give back to those who lost everything. We were fortunate enough, we did get hit by the flood pretty hard, but we were fortunate enough to not have any damage to any of our business assets or anything like that. So we were in a position to be able to do something like this where we could open up for a day. We had to wait till we got electricity, which was, I think, I think Saturday. And uh, we just wanted to come out and do something. I didn't know this many people were going to be out here, um, but man, it's been a great turnout. We're glad that we were able to feed so many people. Junior's post on Facebook around 3 p.m. yesterday saying it ran out of food after feeding 600 people. In just a few days, those at East Perry Elementary School here in Hazard have put back to school prep on hold to help the devastated communities in our area. The Perry County School System is offering food, water, clothing, cleaning supplies, and other essentials at East Perry and offering emergency shelter at West Perry. And although relief coordinators are happy with the community support, they need the momentum to keep going. The, the hurt on the people's faces when you go out um, it's devastating, and, and we want to be uh, the people that step up and, and do something positive. You know, we're not, we know we can't fix it, but, but we can do things that can make their life a little bit easier. 
One of the coordinators of the East Perry flood relief efforts, Jody Maggard, says if you are interested in volunteering with East Perry's efforts, all you need to do is just show up. Hazard High School has become a flood relief donation and pickup site for the people of Perry County and beyond. Those with Hazard High School relief efforts say they have given out hundreds of cases of water. Uh, the school's youth service coordinator, Helen Williams, says she is amazed by how much support they have received in this time of need. The outpouring from our community and just people outside of the community. I've even had people, friends of mine from California, that have called and have sent money in for us. And um, so it's just us coming together. It's what we do. Perry proud and Appalachian strong. Williams says if you are interested in donating items, you can call Judge Executive Scott Alexander's office or Hazard High School. As of now, they are in need of cleaning supplies and anything that can help clean up mud left behind from the flooding. Appalachian Apparel Company here in Hazard is raising money for flood relief. In fact, the amount raised in 48 hours left the owner of the company shocked. While well, the store is raising funds by selling these t-shirts, owner Joey McKinney says they raised $75,000 in 48 hours, blowing his expectations. He says he's been in contact with city and county leaders, along with the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky, on how to get money to those who need it. We want to make sure that the money is going to the immediate needs of the people to put the money in the hands for these people to start rebuilding and, and, and you know, doing whatever they can uh, as quickly as they can. Well, McKinney says he will keep the fundraiser open until orders slow down. Well, in times like this, we know Eastern Kentuckians are always the first to lend a helping hand. Here at WYMT, we are teaming up with the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky Crisis Fund and the Appalachian Regional Health Care Foundation Flood Relief Fund for the Appalachia Rises Flood Relief Campaign. You can visit WYMT.com to donate the local relief efforts. Six forty four on this Monday morning. New picture just in from Casey Maggard over in Neon with downtown flooding continuing there. So this is basically kind of the back street there behind uh, the main street. Main streets over there. This building right there is City Hall. That's where it's located at. Right there is the area they have Neon Days in, and you can see the water running through downtown this morning. This is what happens when you've got a very uh, saturated ground and you add some more rain on top of that. So again, if you're in Neon on this morning and uh, stay at home because again the power is still on and water and power not a good mix so stay at home hopefully this will start to proceed fairly quickly but again this is a daylight photo uh, from downtown neon so again let's hope that gets out of here pretty soon uh, we tentatively have a briefing scheduled with governor Bashir and from frankfurt at nine o'clock this morning we hope to carry live as a cut in here on wymt and wymt.com so we're going to continue to watch that for you today also watch Watching this cell right here. Actually, let me go back. I thought I had a zoom set up, but I don't. Basically, through parts of Knott County, through parts of Floyd County, into Pike County, even parts of Southwest Virginia, even into a little bit of Southern West Virginia, and then you see a little bit more. But it's starting to kind of fizzle out just a little bit. But you see already in some areas the damage has been done. So if you've need, if you've got any more flooding pictures, please get those to me as soon as we can, so we can get those copyright cleared and get them on the air before the newscast ends. We'll do it in the cut-ins if we have to. But again, temperature 60s and 70s out there this morning. More rain chances throughout the day, back and forth. It's going to be scattered, not all day long. Maybe even see some sunshine at times, but temperatures stay in the 70s before getting into the 80s this afternoon. The time, 646. Good morning. You're watching Mountain News this morning right here on WYMT.